Hey guys, it's Abby and today's video is a vlog. It is a Japan vlog, the long-awaited Japan vlog that I have just not been able to post for you guys. I'm so, so sorry. I just been so busy with school and everything like that. But I finally wanted to get to the point where I could post for you guys. I'm so, so sorry. I just been super busy with work. But I finally wanted to get time to post this video for you guys. This is the vlog from January. This is content from when I was back in Japan in the beginning of this year. I do have a bunch of vlogs from when I went back in March or towards the end of March. And there is so many things that I did that I'm so excited for you guys to see. But before I'm going to show you guys what I did in January, and I actually ended up going back to Harajuku for the first time in four years. It was honestly so much fun. I ended up going to Takeshita Street and it was just so interesting to see how everything had changed. I was a bit sad that a few stores had closed down, but it was really nice to see all the new stores such as this new Sanyo store that had opened. I'm a huge Sanyo fan, so it was really exciting to see that shop. So that is pretty much what this is going to be. Without further ado, let's go ahead and get this video started. So this morning I decided to have some kombini food. I had bought in some stuff from the convenience store the day before. And so I decided to just get a few stuff for my breakfast. Here I'm getting some chips that I um, had not finished eating the day before. So I decided to eat them this morning on my little trip to Harajuku. I was honestly so excited. So I hurried up and then headed over to the train station. I ended up coming across this array of vending machines I thought was really cool on my way to the station. Here I was actually waiting for my train to arrive. And then here I'm filming kind of like the streets as I'm in the train. I love these sort of cinematic footage whenever I look at Japan vlog. So I kind of want to show you guys my view while I was on the train. And then I went onto a different train to head over to Harajuku Station. I feel like Harajuku Station is the cutest. It's so pretty. So this is like a street right in front of Harajuku Station. And so here I was just so excited to finally be back in Japan. Especially in Harajuku's Takeshita Street because it's one of my favorite places. Now, here you guys can see the Burigura is over there. There's a lot of new shops that I was so surprised to see. This shop is still there. I also went to Japan in 2019. Um, I noticed that back when I was in Japan, this shop was still open and it's open even now. So it's still very popular. You guys can see one young there. K-pop fashion is really popular. Um, K-pop in general, one young is very popular. So you guys can buy a bunch of accessories. I believe this place is called Paris Kids. And you can buy a bunch of adorable accessories, bows, ribbons, necklaces, maybe earrings, any sort of accessory you can think of. And even bows for your school uniforms. And then I saw this really cute little collab within the anime. I'm not sure what anime it is, but it was there. And here I decided to walk and head over to this really cute Sanyo shop. This is a new shop they just opened in Takeshita Street. I was honestly so excited to be here because I'm a huge Sanyo fan. My Melody is my absolute favorite Sanyo character. Leave a comment down below letting me know what is your favorite Sanyo character. It used to be Cinemarole for me, but now it is My Melody. My second favorite is Cinemarole. They had a bunch of really like exclusive Sanyo themed items here. Things that you might not find in other shops. This is literally just dedicated to Sanyo. A few things that I saw here are things that I didn't necessarily find in Sanyo Buddha Land when I went. Um, but they had a lot of really cool stuff like keychains. This is definitely very Jidaike inspired. They had a bunch of stationery, folders, just so many adorable things here you guys can see. Um, some stuff were on sale. Um, so you can get some things that are a little bit, maybe a bit cheaper, but still there are so many things for everyone, for children, of course for adults, I'm an adult and I love all things Sandio. So they have different stuff, like you know, even like makeup, that I feel like it's more catered towards kids, but you can still purchase anyways. Um, a bunch of plushies, um, different themed plushies, like for example, here is Cinemarole's wearing a cute little outfit. They had this cute little photo booth section, a little bit like somewhere you can take pictures. That was so cute. Here, I wasn't sure. I think you can make your own keychain. I, I wasn't exactly sure since everything was like in like kanji as well, so I couldn't really read that. And then they had these little miniature bags. I'm not sure what they're for. Maybe you can put your Sandio character. I'm not too sure. But they had different sections dedicated to 
specific Sandio characters, like here is Kuromi, but then they have stuff for Cinemural and for Kuromi as well, Pom Pom Pudding, here's my melody. I had mirrors as well, cute little hair clips. They did have a bunch of Sandio stuff in Don Quixote that when I ended up going, but they had, so these things that you guys see here, a few things you can find in Don Quixote if you guys are in Japan, and check it out, but they had just so many, so many cute things here. And those are for eyelashes to curl your lashes. Um, they had little baby bottles. This is for your nails. This is the kind of things I'm telling you guys about that are probably more catered towards children, but you can still definitely get if you want. All the stuff are absolutely adorable. This is all dedicated to Kuromi, so if you are really into Kuromi, then this is the section to go. They have these really cute towels, or like little, yeah, miniature towels. A fun little fact that you guys did not know, they don't really have any paper towels in Japanese bathrooms. Like especially in the train stations, you will not find, like you can't really dry your hands anywhere. So a lot of women will keep a miniature, like little baby towel in their bag or in their purse and take it with them every everywhere to dry their hands. I often saw this when I was in Japan um, out of the bathroom. I would just have to like dry my hands on my clothing but I would see a lot of Japanese women with their little towels drying their hands. So a little tip if you guys are in Japan definitely buy a little towel. You'll see them a lot in the stores in Japan especially in the shop. They had a bunch of really cute little chains for your phone which that was adorable. And then little miniature like homes, I guess you would call it. Or some new characters, it would remind me of a little Candyland place. And then I ended up heading over to WeGo. This is a popular shop that sells, I would say, a good combination of like Japanese meets Korean style. They sell a lot of really Korean themed clothing, I guess, or that kind of Korean aesthetic. It's kind of edgy. The shop is very, very popular, and I've seen, a, I guess, a lot of girls kind of dress in this style, maybe more than kawaii. So if you guys are kind of curious as to what girls are wearing right now, that's kind of what they're wearing. That's someone to tell me to let you guys know the sizes in Japan. So they do have sizes ranging from small to medium and large, but I would say the sizes are kind of similar to the US, although they don't really appeal to me plus size, unfortunately. I think the largest is just like a size large, which in my personal opinion, they did look like a size large. Like, you know, it reminded me a lot of the sizes here in the US. You don't go past a size large. So just to be on the lookout for that, just kind of a little heads up on the size is. Honestly, you just have to look and try things out. There are a lot of places where you can actually try on the clothing, so you do not have to worry and check it out. So please do not be discouraged. Go ahead and try out the clothing. Kawaii fashion can fit everyone, so go ahead and have a fun time and try on the stuff because you might be surprised. I'm heading over to La Forêt, which is a kind of big building miniature mall, I guess. Maybe not so miniature, but a fashion mall that sells kawaii clothing. A lot of Japanese fashion subculture themed clothing, like dedicated to like the Lolitas, for example, which is amazing. So um, it's another place I really recommend you guys to check out. If you guys are in Harajuku, it's right next to Takeshita Street. You will not miss it. And then heading over to this really adorable cinema roll shop. They had a bunch of cinema roll plushies, a perfect spot to take pictures. They were also having this collaboration with, with this new anime that came out. I forgot the name, but a lot of people were really into it. And then here we have Buri Gura, which you can pretty much take pictures with some friends. And then here, it's kind of like a photo booth, but like inspired by like Korean fashion and Korean pop culture. That was so cool. Now, if you go to the lower floors, you can find what pretty much is dedicated to Lolita fashion. So you'll find places like Angelic Pretty, which is you guys are seeing right here. This is Angelic Pretty with the most adorable clothing I've ever seen in my entire life, guys. I was obsessed with the shop. I wanted to buy everything, but as you guys know, with Lolita fashion, it tends to be quite expensive. Nonetheless, I was so happy to actually be in the shop because of how adorable it was. I really wanted that jacket. And then here are the plushies they have. Now, this is kind of like 
the, between Harajuku and Shibuya. Um, if you keep going straight across, you will meet, um, you will end up in Shibuya. And here I ended up going to the Disney store. If you guys do not know, I'm obsessed with Disney. I'm a huge ultra mega Disney fan. I'm what you call a Disney adult. Um, and in Japan, actually, Disney is quite popular. A lot of people love Disney. I have a Japanese friend who's obsessed with Disney as well. It's always so nice to talk to her about Disney stuff. But um, yeah, they have a huge Disney store here. And it was just so exciting to go because they closed down all the ones here in California. And I was just so sad about it. But it was so nice to go ahead and come back and check out the store, see what they have. They always have some sort of collaboration. Now here it kind of is the appearance of Alice, Alice in Wonderland, like your Now this is Cinderella themed cups. It is so adorable. I love that kind of gold rim to it. This store is so so cute. I actually thought it was the biggest Disney store here, but apparently they have an even bigger one in Shinjuku Station. At least that's what my friend told me. She said that I should definitely check it out, which unfortunately I've not been able to check out, but I do want to when I go back to Japan. They have so many, so many unique items here, and of course the towels I was talking to you guys about, they really come in handy, so if you go to Japan and definitely purchase um, a little towel, I figured that out by the end of my trip to Japan, and I was really sad about that. Here they have, I think they have two or three floors, I think it's, I think it's two floors, and this is the very top floor, and it kind of is inspired by Peter Pan here, I think it was so, so cute. Here you guys can see you can actually buy tickets to Disneyland or Tokyo Disney Sea, but they don't do that anymore. I think because of COVID, I think it might change now. But if you are going to Japan now, I think you should be able to buy tickets there. And then here, if you look at the shop, they have little sections inspired by different Disney characters. This is inspired by Pinocchio. Here's a section inspired by Peter Pan, I believe, um, with the wall and the whole room decor. It's absolutely adorable. It is so, so cute. And then this is here, the little booth area that you can pretty much buy your tickets. So hopefully they'll bring that back because, because it's so hard to get tickets. Disneyland, I take you Disney Sea from the US. They just, it's, you have to call customer service. It's complicated. So hopefully they can bring that back. I ended up going to Zara for a little bit, but it's not really my style. So I headed right out pretty quickly. And I ended up heading over to Shibuya 109 or Shibuya Ichimariku as they call it in Japan. I just love saying that. But anywho, it's one of my favorite places to shop. It tends to be a bit more pricey, so if you are trying to save a bit more money, definitely go and shop in Takeshita Street or Harajuku. Those shops I found to be a lot cheaper than Shibuya 109. It tends to be a bit more pricey, but you can find a lot of like Jiraike style. Like Ank Rouge, I think their style is headed is a little bit more towards Jiraike style. So if that's something you guys are interested in, check, definitely definitely check out Shibi 109 and check out Ank Rouge, Liz Lisa, all those shops. All the shops are there. Now I was really sad that they no longer have Swan Kiss. I was honestly so so sad because it was one of my favorite shops. Look at that jacket, absolutely adorable. They have so many new shops that I have not heard of, as well as new and improved clothing. That's really Honestly, Jiraike is the style to go for right now. Everyone's dressing in that style, at least in like the kawaii subculture community. End up heading over to Don Quixote. They have a pretty big Don Quixote in Shibuya. And of course, I explored their makeup section. I'm a huge, huge fan of Japanese makeup. I think it's so cute. I know some people are not a big fan, but I'm a huge mega Japanese makeup fan. I feel like their makeup is so, so cute. The packaging is adorable. It's just a win-win here. The products are really, really good. I'm a huge fan of their mascaras and eyeliners. I've not tried very many eyeshadows, but I have tried the Can Make eyeshadows, and I really do like them. Now, One Link is very popular. They had a whole section dedicated to contract lenses, and you guys can see a bunch of different Japanese models, but Won Young is a recurring one. Um, she's very popular in Japan. A lot of people really, really like her. I mean, who wouldn't? She's absolutely gorgeous. She's one of my favorite K-pop idols. Now, they did have this store dedicated to Burigura. Um, I had not seen the store since I last went here, so I think that's new. It looked really, really cute. And then I headed over to the Daiso in Shibuya, which is quite big. I think it has two floors. It's not like the biggest they have, but it is one that I went to back in 2019 when I was studying there, so it was really nice to kind of go back. But they have a lot more stuff here than maybe your Daiso here in the US. At least the one in the US is quite small compared to this one. 
a lot of Sanyo themed items which I was really really excited about seeing. Then I decided to go back home so I saw a cool little anime sign on a truck and then I went back to the Kesa street and just went to do a little bit of shopping. I was pretty much just exploring because it was my first couple days back in Japan and I just kind of wanted to explore things a little bit. I didn't really buy anything, I just kind of did window shopping but it was really nice to see all the stuff. Here they have a lot of really cute school uniforms. They're a lot cheaper than if you go to Konomi, which I love Konomi but it's kind of pricey. And Don Quixote is another great place to go to get school uniforms that are a bit more affordable. I'd say a bit, not extremely, but a bit affordable compared to Konomi. Now this shop was more dedicated to like K-pop culture and like decorating your pictures of your favorite K-pop idols. So that's kind of what this was about. So this is what I bought today. I didn't really get that many stuff. So apparently Closet Child uh, doesn't open on Thursdays and Sundays and today is a Sunday so I was a bit sad about that but whatever. I'll probably go back tomorrow. I'm not too sure about that. But I did go to Daiso because I needed to get a few stuff. So I ended up getting this really cute headband. It is a My Melody Things headband that you use for like when you take off your makeup and things like that, which I really do need. And then this is a mirror, and it has a dresser apparently, which I think is super cute. I'm going to put that on my table here. And then um, I got a loofah, or I don't know what you call those, but I'm going to go with that. And then when I went to Shibuya 109, they had like this whole collaboration with the, the group La Seraphim or something like that, um, which I thought was super cool. It's just like a little pamphlet because they're doing a collaboration with this company, so these were like the items that they had there. Some of them were like out of stock because they were so popular. Um, and then the back, it looks like this. And then back to the haul. So I ended up getting this really cute chopsticks. They are inspired by cute anime. I'm not really sure the name of it. Oh, I think it's called Precure, which I've heard of a lot. It's quite popular. And then I got this little dustpan, which I need to, instead of getting a broom, I thought it would be like too big. So I decided to get something smaller. And then I got this, another item to like uh, use as a headband. I got another one because once this one gets dirty or the other one gets dirty, like this one right here, I want to make sure that I can just like use another one because typically I'll get like makeup on it. So yeah, and then I got another little laundry net. I didn't really need it because I already have one, but, but this was Sandy inspired, so I decided to get it. And then I ended up getting this cutting board that I really needed because the apartment didn't come with it. The apartment is fully furnished, but this is one thing that they didn't have, so yeah. Thank you guys so, so much for watching. I really hope you guys enjoyed this vlog. I have many more vlogs to come from my time in Japan. I'm so excited for you guys to see them. On um, my recent trip to Japan, I actually ended up going to Osaka as well as Kyoto. So there were so many new experiences and I had a lot, a lot of fun. So many new things that I got to do that I never really thought of. There were things that just kind of ended up happening spontaneously as we went through the trip and I just had so, so much fun. So I can't wait for you guys to see those vlogs. Well, thank you so much for letting me reach 3K subscribers. I mean, we are a bigger family now and my next goal is to reach 4k subscribers now if you guys want to see more japan content then please 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 make sure to subscribe and click on that little notification bell that lets you know once i post it in a new video if you guys do not want to miss any japan vlogs then please please, please make sure to subscribe to my channel please follow me at the official underscore abby on instagram for some cute fashion inspiration um i did post a few stuff of my trip to japan and if you guys want to see you know keep up with me in my life you know see in real time what i'm doing then go ahead and follow me on my instagram i always always record and post um, stuff on real time wherever I may be. For example, on my recent trip to Japan, I actually did post some stuff on my Instagram story. So um, if you guys want to see, you know, get to know me a little bit better, then definitely follow me on my Instagram. I'll leave a link to all my social media accounts in the description box below, including my Pinterest and my TikTok for you guys. I really, really appreciate it. You guys can follow me everywhere. As always, thank you guys so, so much for watching. Bye-bye.